calendar. Today is our second day on transformations. We just had our sixth quiz. There are only 10 quizzes total, so we're more than halfway through. Uh, in fact, I think I mentioned today is the halfway point of the whole semester. There are 42 Monday, Wednesday, Friday classes total. Today's number 21. Um, okay, so more transformations today. Then we have our review day on Monday. And finally, our second test is this coming Wednesday. Um, I don't. Uh, I hope this doesn't come out as being pessimistic, but if you are considering withdrawing from the class, do as well as you can. Take this test. I will grade it. I will give it back to you. And uh, you will have like complete as complete information as you can because the last day to withdraw is not until uh, it's like a few weeks away still. So if you are at all considering withdrawing, take the test, do as well as you can, and then we can sit down and have a conversation with like lots of information. Okay. Um, all right. So that's the thing about the test. And the reason I wanted you guys to start on page 53. We're not going to be starting here today, but I just want to mention that uh, there are sample test problems, just like there were for the first test. They start on page 53, and if you just kind of keep flipping pages, you will find a whole slew of problems. Eventually, you will find some answers. So the answer key is there. In addition to the answer key, I think I mentioned that I have made videos of me going through every single one of those problems. It is up on YouTube. There are different ways to find it, but the easiest way is to check the email that I sent out like, I don't know, three or four days ago. Um, and you'll find in there a collection of playlists. And for you guys, 107 sample test number two, click on that and, um, and you'll see the list of all the videos, problem by problem that, that we just mentioned here in Packet. Any questions on any of that stuff? At the moment, how many views do we have? They're going to skyrocket soon, right? You know it's here. It's, it is time to start studying if we haven't started studying. The test is less than one week from now. All right, um, so that is that. Uh, one other thing, a reminder that uh, Open Classroom Week is coming up. This coming Monday is when it starts. So if you are interested in, um, in visiting some classes to see some different subject matter or to look at some different teachers, start Monday morning and go to as many as you can. It's an easy way to find who is teaching what and where they are. It's on the GCC homepage. We looked at that link the other day. And it, you just sit in on any class that's open. I have a sense that most classes will be open, um, but it's a, it's an individual teacher's decision whether it's open or closed. So um, we'll just do this real quick, and we'll go back to the homepage. And right on the homepage, you will see Open Classroom Week. It's here. Click on the link. It describes for you how the thing works. And right there is a list of all the different classes that are offered. So find the class that you're interested in. Maybe um, um, maybe Math 151 is where some of you guys are headed. That's the applied calculus. Uh, and so you find the class you're interested in. And uh, you'll find out it's a Tuesday, Thursday. And it meets 1230 to 230. And it's in East 128. And Tom Frederick is the teacher. And you just plan on going to that class on Tuesday of next week. And on the outside of that classroom door, there will be a sign that says open or closed. If it says open, you walk in. If it says closed, find something else to do. Easy? OK. I really think you can take advantage of this, but I also think that waiting until Monday to decide, oh, am I going to go to something? How do I find out what's happening? I would encourage you to make a plan. Come up with a list of things that you want to do, and then find out exactly when and where they meet. Also note that this Tuesday, Thursday class is not meeting Thursday next week. Why not? Thursday is advising day. There are no classes Thursday. So if you have a Tuesday, Thursday class you're interested in, how many chances do you have to go see it once on Tuesday? OK? So don't wait until the end of the week. You might have missed your single opportunity to see this class. Any other questions about this? All right. Uh, so then we actually start here on page 59. So if we could jump there, and we'll go to the middle of the page for number one. Matt? Yes. One more minute, okay. We have two goals of eight to work. That's the plan for completing the good area's graph, which is the specific equation that y equals the average of value. Learn how to handle. Thank you. Uh, Eric, two. Uh, 
Okay, so the difference between this and the stuff that you guys did all of last class is that all of last class was the absolute value function and you could plot points and you could make a table. You can't make a table here because you don't have a rule. You don't know what the rule is for this function. So what I need you to do, the, the leap that I need you to make to succeed here is to recognize that if you add two on the outside of a function, any function, it behaves in a predictable way. And you guys point, where does the graph move when you add two on the outside of a function? Everybody pointing. I see some pointers. I want to see lots of pointers. Good. So plus two on the outside shifts the graph up two. As soon as you recognize it's an up two, great. Just plot each of these points again, bump them up two. This guy lands here, this one lands here, and this one lands here. And then play your favorite game from elementary school, connect the dots. Questions on that one? Okay. Yes. And that's an important thing we mentioned last time. Outside is a vertical, inside is a horizontal. Where does this plus five live, inside or outside? That is inside, clearly inside of those parentheses. So this is a horizontal thing. And you guys point in one horizontal direction or another, adding five on the inside, where does it move? It moves left, opposite of what I expect. I think plus five is to the right. This is actually left five. Go ahead and go back to the original graph. It's black up here. Go to the original, move each of those three points left five units, and play connect the dots. Any questions about that one? Do we see the difference between what you did last time and this? I mean, like, you're, it's the same conclusion, but you can't plot, you can't make a table. You can't figure it out. Like, you guys figured out, oh, what does it do? Oh, look, it looks like it moves left five. You can't figure it out for these anymore because you don't have a function rule. You don't have a, the function is absolute value of x, or the function is x squared. So you have to understand what's going on here. Oh, look, we're open. Um, so, uh, okay, so that's the difference. I want to point out one more thing here. Can you guys tell me very specifically, like up to, did it, did it affect the x-coordinates or the y-coordinates of the new points? Up to is a y. And so more very specifically, what happens to the y-coordinates of every point? But without using the word up, because that's kind of a, a visual. Uh, shift is a yes, but we're just talking numbers. What happens to all the y numbers? You add two to them, right? So I'm just going to put here as an alternative, add two to y values. How about for this x plus five? What really happened? subtracted 5 from the x values. Again, it's counterintuitive for me at least. I see x plus 5, I think I'm adding 5 to the x's, but we know that's not what happens. We see that we actually ended up going left 5. It goes horizontal, it does the opposite of whatever you put Right, that's it. So what are we saying here? We're saying uh, subtract 5 from the x values. Any questions about uh, just a different way to think about the same thing? Okay, uh, we can go to the next page, but maybe first we can just take a quick look at the quiz. Uh, I don't have an answer key to project because I haven't taken it myself yet. Uh, write a sentence. Uh, F of 42, so somebody who is currently 42 years old can expect to live another 38 years. That's what that means. Uh, number two, would you expect f to be an increasing or decreasing function? I just glanced through a few of the papers, and I'm pleasantly surprised by how many uh, folks appear to be getting this right. This is a decreasing function, which means that as one variable goes up, the other one goes down. As the one variable goes up, as the person gets older, 
how many years do they have left to live, it goes down. So this is, oh, I'm sorry. I told you it was going to take the joy away from the beautiful Friday sunny afternoon. Um, so this is a decreasing function. Let's see if we can go down. This is the problem. Is that word and and smart stuff don't always interact very well. Okay, that was it for that one, right? Uh, number two, find the average rate of change. This is simply a formula. I say simply, if you don't know the formula, then it's impossible. So uh, I will tell you that here's the formula. You um, plug in the x values into the function. I'll go ahead and call this first one a and the second one b, although if you swap them, it's completely fine. So we're plugging, uh, first thing is g of b. We're plugging 5 in there. 3 times 5 squared plus 1, 76. Subtract. Then we're plugging 1 in, g of a. So let's plug 1 in. 3 times 1 squared plus 1, 4. Divided by, then you just subtract the b and the a as they are. No more plugging in. 5 minus 1. That's those numbers. Questions on that? Then we just clean it up. 72 divided by 4 happens to go in evenly, 18. <laughs> All right, let's try going down here. Okay, uh, for each function, describe in words. Okay, so this relates to the stuff that we talked about last time. I expect this was more challenging for some of you. Um, 7 to the x plus 4. Can you guys first decide if that's an inside or an outside thing? A couple of votes for inside. Other thoughts? At least one vote for outside. Yeah? Outside? Yeah. Let's, let's think about, about um, the original function right here and recognize that it used to be x, but what is it now? x plus 4. So in some sense, I'm telling you replace the x with an x plus 4. That is figure out what f of x plus 4 is. Instead of x, you're putting x plus 4. If you're able to write it that way, you see immediately that's an inside thing, as opposed to something like 7 to the x plus 4. 7 to the x is the function. It hasn't changed, but then you add 4 at the end. It's really different. So this is inside, and f of x plus 4 is similar to one we just looked at in the packet. That's left 4. And how about that one-third times 7 to the x? Is that one-third inside or outside? Uh, it's outside. It's just 7 to the x, and then you stick something in the front of it, outside of it. So in a very real sense, this is really one-third times the original function. So outside means it must be vertical. Multiplying by one-third, is that a vertical stretch or a compression? Compression, taking all the y's and making them one-third of what they are. So that's a vertical compression. I should get half credit for what? Horizontal. Oh, but not saying the left four part. I see. All right, why can't I? So you see this flickering? That's not what I want to do. <laughs> All right, here we go. Uh, and then the last one uh, is graphing this guy. Uh, let me move down just a tiny bit. I'm going to make this smaller so we can see what's happening. OK, uh, so 6 minus x is a line. I'm going to. Six minus x is a line, and we are going to um, plug in zero. When you plug in zero, you get six. That's this point. When you plug in five, you get one. I, I can't tell. Is that where this stuff is? This isn't working out so well for me, Eliza. All right. Um, okay, so we'll just do it from here. Okay, so we said uh, six, zero, which is up there, and then uh, one, what was it, five and one? Five and one is this guy, and so you connect the dots, and that's the line. And then the next piece of the puzzle was, uh, oh, open circle, because it was uh, not equal to five. And then it was equal to one between five and nine, so one is, is between five and nine. It is one the whole time. And actually, if you have something which is both open and filled in, it's just filled in. I mean, it's, 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 it's either there or it's not. It's not there because of the top rule, but then it is there for the, the middle rule. 
And then the bottom rule is just 11 uh, between 9 and 12. So 11 is up here. And I think that this guy was not including on that side. And it was included on this side. So we get something like that. OK. Um, let's come back here. Welcome. All right, so we'll go to three, Iris. Okay, so here's the idea of this kind of problem. There are two things happening here. There's a times two and there's a subtract one. Let me first ask you this question. Separate question. Suppose you have some graph, you start with some graph, and I say move it to the right by two and then up by three. You picture, just do it like just some general type thing. Now suppose I ask you to do the same stuff, but in the other order. First, go back to the original, move it up three, and then to the right two. Do we get different things or the same thing? Same thing, right? Whether you go left and then up, or up and then left, or right, whatever, uh, it's the same. So the reason it's the same is because one of them was a horizontal thing and the other one was a vertical thing. And they have nothing to do with each other. They don't interact at all. But the two and the one in this case are both where? Inside or outside? They're both inside. Both of those things are horizontal. Maybe it still doesn't matter. Maybe we'll get the same graph no matter what we do first. Eric is thinking it's going to matter. Let's see if it matters. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is, um, what am I going to do first? I'm going to deal with, uh, no, let's actually deal with this minus 1 first. If x becomes x minus 1, it's a horizontal thing. Are we talking stretching, compressing, or are we talking shifting? Yeah, if you make an x into an x minus 1, it is a shift. It is to the right, opposite of what you'd expect, by exactly 1. So let's take this graph and just shift it to the right by 1. I'll plot the new points over here, this one, and this one, and this one. So this is the f of x minus 1 part. And then we're going to get to the trickier part, Taylor. So let's do the trickier piece, which is that times 2. So again, it's a horizontal thing because it's inside. The timesing by 2, it's either a stretch or a compression. Which one is it? It's the opposite of what you want it to be. It feels like doubling should stretch. It doesn't. Anything inside does the opposite. That's a horizontal compression. So how do we take this guy and smush it horizontally? Well, I'm just gonna, I'm just going to draw something. Don't draw this. But do you guys believe that maybe I could I could smush things in something like uh, let's see sorry not not up there but down here would you guys agree that has been smushed horizontally yes All right it's been smushed horizontally but I made a kind of an arbitrary choice here to think of this uh, three as like the middle of my smush like everybody get closer and closer to the three that's the choice that I made but couldn't I have made a different choice like everybody get closer and closer to the four let me undo the stuff that I made. And suppose that I say, all right, I want, I want the 4 to be the thing that we're getting closer to. So if we get twice as close to the 4, maybe that point goes there. Maybe this point goes here. The 4 is already on the 4, so it doesn't move. Would you agree that's been smushed by the same? It's, it's smushed the same, but it looks very different from what it did before. So what we need to do is make sure we understand what are we smushing with respect to? Is it, is it the 3? Is it the 4? Is it something else? It turns out it's always the same thing. And when we, when we talk about horizontal compression, horizontal compression, we always mean get closer to the y-axis. That's what we're smushing towards. You're not smushing to the 3. You're not smushing to the, uh, to the 4. You're smushing towards the y-axis, towards x equals 0. Not towards the origin. Because if I said smush towards the origin, then maybe this point would end up going here, and this point would end up going here, and that point would go. Like, that's not, I'm not saying smush to the origin, which would be both, both a vertical and a horizontal. I'm saying we're just doing horizontal. You're just smushing towards the y-axis. This is kind of a new, uh, sort of new territory for us. What that too means is make the x's, x values, 
half of what they used to be. Why is it half? Because it's one divided by the two that you see in the parentheses. That's why it's half. So let's see if we can't make all of these x's half of what they were. The point here at the top used to be x equals 1. You make all the x's half. What does it become? 0.5. The y stays exactly the same. doesn't go up or down. It just smushes towards the y-axis. And you guys plot two more points, the other two points. Make the x's half. Label the points if you need to label the points with their coordinates. Okay, so let's try that point at the bottom. How much is the x currently? It is 3. You make it half of what it was, it becomes 1 and a half. What about the y value? It stays exactly what it is. It just smushes straight towards the y-axis, and it becomes 1 and a half. Finally, the point on the right used to be x equals how much? 4. You make all the x's a half of what they were, it becomes 2. How about the y value? Same as what it was. That right there is our f of 2 times x minus 1. It is definitely trickier to stretch compress versus just shifting left, right, up, down. Shifting is quite straightforward, but this is tricky. OK, so that black. What do you mean the other way? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, it is true that the going from the green to the black appears to be generally a left kind of motion. But if the green had been over here, then the black would have ended up being half as close to the axis, something like that. So it depends on where you are. It's a good observation. OK, um, so let's talk about uh, the possibility of maybe doing these things in the reverse order from what we did. You guys told me that if you just move to the right and then up, you get the same graph as if you move up and then to the right. Let's see what happens if we do this in the reverse order. The first thing we did was move which way? We moved to the right one, and then we smushed it horizontally. Let's do the other direction. Go back to the original graph at the far left. We're going to smush all of these guys towards the y-axis horizontally. All the x's become half of what they were. Let's start at the far right. This point right here, how much is x? It's 3. You take x and you make them always half. What's the new x? Is 1.5. What was the y? 0. What's the new y? Stays at 0. So 1.5 and 0 is this point right here. Let's try the point at the bottom. Make the x half of what it is. What's the new x? 1. What do you do with the y? Stays the same. We're only doing horizontal stuff. So we go to 1 and negative 2. It's there. Last one is tricky for some folks. Take the x and make it half of what it is. What's the new x? Still 0. Half of 0 is 0. What about the y? It's the same. Why did that point not move? It's the center. It's, it's the middle. It's on the y-axis. The y-axis is saying, OK, hey, everybody, I want to be the, the center of this party here. Everybody come closer to me. So what happens to people that are already on the line? They're as close as they can be. They don't go anywhere. So the first graph is this one. And I'm comfortable saying that this is like f of, which one did we deal with, the 2 or the 1? We dealt with the 2. It's just f of 2x. Smush horizontally. Then we're going to deal with that minus 1. Which way are we moving? We go to the right one. Take each of those points, shift them to the right one. What 
any questions on the second shift? Okay, so now my here's my question. Did the black thing that we got in the middle match up perfectly with the black thing we got on the far right? The answer is no. That's weird. What we saw before was that shifting to the right and then up gives you the same final thing as going up and then right. But it's because vertical and horizontal don't mix at all. Here you have two horizontal things, and depending on what order you choose to do them, you get different answers. Guess how many of those two things is the right answer? <laughs> One of them is the right answer, right? So you can do everything good. You can know everything there is to know about, like, oh, just uh, half the x's and then move everybody to one to the right and still get the wrong answer if you don't know how the order in which to apply them. So what are you supposed to do first? Well, let's just figure it out. And then I've got a little, like, one-line summary that is going to help you here. Um, suppose that we look, for example, at, uh, at, let's say, yeah, order of operations is important. Let's, let's come to this point right here. 2, negative 2. What that means is that originally, f of 2 was negative 2. x, y. This is a fact. I know this to be true. Now suppose that we somehow tried to plug in some important number uh, into this new function. What I'd like to do is figure out which one of these bottom points, I'm going to circle the bottom point on the black graphs, because those are our final answers, but one of them is right and one of them is wrong. To figure out which one is right, I'm going to take the x values that we got for these two points and see what happens. Suppose that you plug in uh, the x value. Uh, let's plug in the x value right. Which one do we want to do first? Let's try this one over here. How much is x right there? It is 2. I'm going to plug 2 in for this x. So f of 2 times 2 minus 1. Yes? Just plugging in the 2 for the x. You don't need to write this because, again, we're just going to get to the, the bullet point summary in a second. But how much is all this when you combine? It's really 2, right? And you just do the arithmetic in there. You get the number 2. Going way back to the left in purple, how much is f of 2? It's negative 2. Did that point circled there in red land on the right spot? Did it land at negative 2? Yeah, that's the y value, right? This is the point to negative 2. It, it gives you what you were supposed to get. It's supposed to be at negative 2, according to this. This is negative 2. Oh, good. It is at negative 2. That's the right one. Let's try the other side. Look at the bottom point. A little bit tough for my estimate here, but how much is x? It was actually 1.5. Okay, so I can plug 1.5 in up here. So I've got uh, f of 2 times 1.5 minus 1. 1.5 one minus 1 is 0.5 times 2 is 1. This lands me on f of 1. Okay, I suppose if you really feel like doing it, you can figure out, not that one, you could figure out f of 1 by looking at that point. Not going to matter. We were supposed to end up using this fact. The point on the bottom is supposed to land on the bottom when we're, when we're done. And the point on the bottom ultimately gave you f of 2. If I'm now asking it for f of 1, I have found a different point. Somehow this point over here in red has magically ended up down there, and that's bad news. So it's actually the second thing is the right thing to do. So here's my bullet point summary. We will go down to number 4. Uh, where are we now? Can we go to Sam? Okay, that's underlined and it's got an exclamation point, so you can read it again. Yeah, Sam. Thank you. That's a good amount of enthusiasm. Stretches and compressions before shifts. Um, okay, so what did we end up doing first over here on the far right? Did we move to the right or did we compress? Compressed first. Look at the green. We compressed. And then we moved it to the right. Looking at the original equation, you do your compression or stretch first, and then you shift. And if you do that, you will be safe. There is one subtlety. We're not going to get into it, but I'm just mentioning it here. It is important that that 2 has been factored out in the original. You guys see it's a 2 and then parentheses. If it was not factored out, then my little bullet point summary is no good. 
but I will never give you one which isn't factored out. I'm just pointing out there's a subtlety here. I'm, I'm, it's not that I'm lying to you, it's just that there's one extra thing that I will always give you so you don't have to worry about it. So stretches, compressions first, then shifts. Let's try. Yes, it is. And, and if this feels opposite to you, then that's one more thing to kind of remember to cue you on what to do. If you feel it's opposite, then you have to remind yourself, do the opposite of what I expect to do. You're right. If I just said order of operations, according to what's here, I would theoretically subtract one first, right? If I just plugged in a number, I would have to subtract one first and then times it by two. It's actually not the order of operations. It's different. However you can remember it, you need to remember it. Okay. Let's go to number five. Um, no problem. Bye. Uh, so I'm going to ask you guys to try five. Uh, can we go to Connor? Okay. Just to save time, how about we say do it in one order? That is, do it in the correct order. Stretches and compressions first, shifts last. You guys are going to, you can use both graphs or just the one. But do two things, talk to your neighbors about what two things are represented by the two and the minus one, and in two steps, get to the final graph. Okay, so we've got a two, we've got a minus one. What does the two do? Timesing it by two, what does it do? So it doubles the values of the y's. That's a vertical stretch. Subtract one on the outside. What does that do? That shifts it down one. Subtract one from all the y's. Which one do you do first? The stretch first. Stretch compression comes before the shift. So I have stretched this by a factor of two. That is, I have doubled all the y values. Notice that there is one point that does not move. Which one? The three zero. Oopsies. What happens when you double the y at that point? Nothing. Right? So that doubling, that times 2, it's a stretch. But you have to have some center. So here you have somebody that doesn't want to be anything to do with the party, and it says, everybody get away from me. Everybody needs to get twice as far away from me as you currently are. So this point over here says, okay, fine, whatever. This point down here says, fine, whatever. But what happens to someone who's like right on the line, twice as far from no distance is no distance. It doesn't move. So we've got that, and then minus one, down one. Goes from purple to blue. How are we doing on this one? Sam, Hayes, and Megan, anything we can clarify? Hazen? Can we help with something? Yeah, so the first thing was to double all the y's. That's what we did in the middle. And then the second thing was to subtract one from all the y's. That goes to the end. All right. Um, so there is a group activity that um, will take at least 20 minutes and probably more. So let me finish what I want to say in the next 60 seconds so you guys have a chance to practice. There's no substitute for this besides practice. Uh, but I will say, this odd and even stuff, later on, check out the definitions. There will be homework testing you on this or getting you to, to practice this concept. I'm skipping it, but it doesn't mean I think it's unimportant. It just means I have other stuff I want to do right now. Um, and then uh, finally, number 10, why do we care about transformations? Well, uh, transformations kind of open the door that let us go from like a few functions that maybe you just know what they look like. We saw the absolute value function looks like the letter V. Well, I know what the V looks like. I can then take the V and transform it in any number of ways and without doing a whole lot of work, just kind of decide what kind of a modified V I have. And that's really powerful. Given the graph of one thing, you can then generate graphs of all kinds of things that look like that one thing. And then the other thing is it allows us to get some equations. Now, we haven't talked so much about uh, equation of a circle, but maybe in your past you've seen that equation before. We will talk about it later on. Um, but have you also seen this one? Anybody seen the more complicated version? Yeah? Anybody know what the center of the first circle is? 
It's actually centered at the origin. The other circle is centered at some arbitrary point H and K. And so you go from a specific circle at the origin to being able to move your circle to anywhere you want, and you do it by transformation stuff. Move H to the right, move K to the, uh, you know, up or down. Same kind of thing with some other types of equations. All right, so let's have you guys work uh, in your groups on these. Uh, the first thing is there's two activities for today. There is a matching. You have one starting graph up there at the top right. You have nine equations, and on this page and the next, you will have nine graphs. Your job is to figure out which graph goes with, with which equation. And before you dive in, can I point out one other thing here? The second activity, it's on page 62. Everybody just jump down to the bottom of 62 for one moment. Bottom of page 62 involves uh, not the starting graph that I gave you above, but rather three equations, y equals x squared, y equals absolute value of x, and y equals square root of x, and then doing transformations on those. So your job is going to be to come up with an equation that matches my graph. Now, this is only easy if you know what x squared looks like, if you really have a good sense of what x squared looks like. Otherwise, you have no idea how to transform. So what I did is I printed on a separate paper, I'm going to hand these out, what x squared looks like, what absolute value x looks like, and what square root of x looks like. So you're going to use these three graphs that I'm going to hand out to help you here, okay? Let's start with the matching one up at the top. I'll come around if there are questions.